Uh, joining us now to discuss this matter and other matters where entertainment, politics, and public policy collide, it's the right man on the left coast, a contributor to Newsmax.com. It's James Herson Skyping in from Southern California. James, what do you make of this international contretemps over, uh, over what's going on here with the release of this new, quote, comedy? Well, that's North Korea for you, you know. Uh, they don't have this uh, concept called the First Amendment. And so the trailer that came out earlier this month did use the name of the leader of North Korea in, in the trailer, uh, Kim Jong-un. The character is called Kim Jong-un. They really go to North Korea. And James Franco and Seth Rogen play uh, basically television hosts. They have a tabloid television show they find out in the plot that Kim Jong-un is a big fan of the show, so they decide in order to get credibility as serious journalists, they're going to go to North Korea and get an interview with Kim Jong-un, which they get. Uh, the CIA hears about this, and they decide to recruit the two comedic characters to assassinate Kim Jong-un. So, as you pointed out, uh, the, the North Korean press service, which is controlled by the government, issued a release. They called it an act of war, an act of terror, and they also threatened, this is interesting, they said, if the United States government does not prevent the release of this film, which is coming this October, they will retaliate. They will mercilessly and sternly retaliate. And the question is, well, what will the Obama administration do with that retaliation? Will they honor the First Amendment? I, I suppose one could argue that if the character was a maybe a Muslim leader, since the administration is used to blaming video footage, they might just ban it. Mm. Well, uh, let, let me ask you this, uh, because we think back to a Toronto film festival when George W. Bush was president, and very infamously a, a movie was made that premiered north of our border in Canada, The Assassination of George W. Bush. Now, I know that com comedies can take on some, some, some weird notions. I think about one of my favorite movies, The Coen Brothers Raising Arizona, which had to do with kidnapping an infant, of all things, but they turned it into a funny treatment. Uh, do you think that North Korea has perhaps uh, ensured Bafo box office for Seth Rogen and company? Oh, absolutely. I think the studio is celebrating because it gets this publicity. As a matter of fact, Seth Rogen has taken to Twitter. His response to North Korea is, quote, people don't usually want to kill me uh, for one of my movies until after they've paid 12 bucks for it. <laughs> That's what he put on Twitter. So they're already using it for publicity. And, you know, this has happened before. There was a movie years ago that Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the guys that did South Park, they made a film called Team America. And in that film, it was used, puppets starred in the film, they made fun of Kim Jong-un's father, Kim Jong-il. The North Korean government tried to ban that film. They used their embassies in several countries to attempt to ban it, and it was unsuccessful. And that's because in their culture, of course, uh, the, the leader of North Korea is a complete consummate totalitarian dictator used to controlling the pop culture and the media. And Kim Jong-un pays close attention. Maybe his friend Dennis Rodman can be a mediator here uh, <laughs> and go make sure that uh, he doesn't get mad over the comedy. James, we're going to change lanes a little bit here, and we also want to talk about another very controversial topic right now in the entertainment scene, which is Gary Oldman's apology tour. We know he was on Jimmy Kimmel last night offering up another apology for his comment to Playboy that Hollywood was run by Jews. Um, so I don't believe we, we've got that clip. However, um, given this story, my, my question to you is, do you think his apology was enough, especially given this is a man who went off about hypocrisy, political correctness, Gibson, Baldwin, and you know the comments that, uh, what could be deemed as anti-Semitic comments that he made? Do you think this apology was enough? Oh, I think he's been, uh, you know, abject and contrite, and you know he did an interview with Playboy. People sometimes in Hollywood think. That when, when they're interviewing with Playboy, that they are required to use profanity and to be outrageous. And Gary Oldman has libertarian leanings. 
And so he decided to talk about political correctness. He did so terribly, unartfully, and now he's running around, as you pointed out. I, I think his apology is sufficient. The irony is the very thing that he's talking about, political incorrectness, he is perpetuating because of the fact that he used s such um, unartful language and profane language. And he mentioned three names in his interview. He mentioned Mel Gibson, Alec Baldwin, and Nancy Pelosi. And in the context of those three names, he gave examples of pejoratives that you cannot use in public. And we know this is the playing field. So this is an example of a celebrity sort of self-destructing. And I, I think it's sufficient. The problem is these apology tours tend not to work. A uh, period of time is required after them. Case in point is Michael Richards, who uh, for a long time stopped working. Michael Richards of Seinfeld fame and now is coming back to work. It took a long time. And so I think uh, for me, the apology is sufficient, maybe not for the media. And uh, in, in the case of Michael Richards, uh, presumably he got some pretty good residuals off uh, that continual long running Seinfeld in syndication. So his current work status uh, may be dormant somewhat, but residuals don't hurt an actor to get a check <laughs> oh, any way they can. No, not and especially for that show, which <laughs> you is bet. one of the highest residuals in the world. James Herson, as always, you're our right man on the left coast. We thank you for your time today and for your many contributions to our, our parent website, Newsmax.com. We're coming right thank back. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend.